Eva Hausman, who is featured in the new book, Fearless Female Leaders, is the founder of the Mother's Day movement and a longtime activist and absolutely the epitome of fearless leader in my mind. Welcome, Eva. Great to have you here. Hi, Kathy. It's wonderful to be with you. And I'd like to thank you for giving me the honor of being one of the eight people recognized in the book. Um, the experience of reading my story and preparing for this interview has really been eye-opening for me. And in November, I turned 80. And because of this experience, I feel like I've learned a lot about myself and my background that I didn't know before. And that's kind of extraordinary at this point of my life. That's right. That is awesome. I think you're ready to run for president of the United States. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it on, 80. Look what we can do. <laughs> it's interesting that you have built all of this success, 14 years, 14 campaigns through the Mother's Day movement. I want to have you share a little bit about your work at the Mother's Day movement. You know, what was the spark of inspiration and how have you built success over what, the last 13 years is it now? I think this is our 14th campaign this Mother's Day. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, I read Half the Sky, a book by Nicholas Kristoff and Cheryl Wudun. And in short, that book put a fire in my belly. And it... I, what I read was that women and families in the developing world were lagging so far behind the rest of us. And Nick and Cheryl gave a prescription for how we could make that better. And one of the ways was to act. And as a result of that, I did a very small fundraiser for Fistula which was the topic that really resonated with me the most from the book because it was so horrific the way young women who had this condition were treated. The title of your story, um, Eva Hausman, Fearless in the Face of Indifference. And I'd, I'd just like to hear a little bit more about how you have come up against indifference in the world and how you have fearlessly overcome it. I guess that goes back to how I was raised. And my parents were immigrants who, in preparing for this in interview, I finally I realized how bold and how brave they were. Um, A, to escape Nazi Germany, but B, what really impacted me, and I thought it was the former for most of my life, is the fact that they were entrepreneurs. They didn't, and I don't take away from anybody that just, just gets a job, but they started a fashion business. They, they, they went from Bridgeport to New York City, introduced themselves to wholesalers, apparently either had credit or were able to make some sort of an arrangement so they could get merchandise, come back to Bridgeport, put it in a trunk and go door to door. They were very successful at that. And the really entrepreneurial thing was that they bought a truck and the truck had fashions on wheels on it painted in blue. And my mother, who was under five feet, and I, I figured out today in 1946 or eight when they got the truck was 35 years old, put herself in this almost UPS sized truck with spike heels and went on appointments, not door to door anymore, and was basically a personal shopper. That was bold and brave. The other part of my upbringing was that my dad 
was very serious man, had been through a lot, and he was fixated on the McCarthy hearings, on the Rosenberg trial, praying that our country would not ever become a dictatorship like what they left. So in processing for this interview, I realized that their boldness and then their seriousness made me want to make a difference in the world. And the way I chose to do it was to be a teacher because teaching social studies I had the opportunity to encourage students to believe that the past does not have to be repeated if it's bad, that we can learn from it and make things better. I believe that people who don't think they can make a difference usually don't, and that I just have tried in small ways through volunteering to help others. Beautiful. I love that you are rediscovering the origins of your leadership through generational, through your, your parents yeah. um, and your example, your fearless leadership role modeling to your daughters and your grandchildren. You're part of their origin story too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I guess what I what I wanted to say about my mom in particular was and, and and me as a teenager, I was embarrassed having a mother on that truck, but she didn't care what other people thought. And that I think is a, a real part of leadership. You have to believe in yourself and not necessarily be judged by others. Um, and I'm hoping that the readers that read our book, Fearless Female Leaders, stories and strategies to empower more women to lead, that more is really important, more women to lead. I hope they are as inspired or at least a fraction inspired as you were when you read Half the Sky, which motivated you into some incredible fearless action that has sustained itself for 14 years in the Mother's Day movement and changed countless lives for the better. Get your copy today and join us in this empowering movement to redefine leadership and unlock the limitless potential in all of us.